Good morning, seventh graders. Today is Friday, May 29th. We are on day 13 of our notes. We're continuing with our constitution notes. So you're going to take your paper, fold it in half, hot dog way. Notes are going to be on your left. Questions are going to be on your right. As always, slide three has the notes all set up for you, so you can copy them over. Okay, don't forget your essential question at the top and your page number. Today we're going to be continuing with the articles. The articles are one of the key principles of the Constitution. There are seven articles to the Constitution that were established as part of the framework of the government. Today we're going to focus on the articles that refer to the executive branch. Now we've talked about the executive branch a little already. Okay, so the executive branch is the branch that contains the president. And it's the executive branch's job to carry out the laws passed by Congress and to run the national government. So the president is the highest elected official, the vice president being the second highest elected official. And the president and the vice president are the only elected positions that represent the entire United States. The president and the vice president, there's only one of each of them. They serve a four-year term in office. They are elected by an electoral college, which we'll talk about shortly. And they have to be over age 35, a natural-born citizen, and reside in the United States for at least 14 years prior to becoming president. So what's the electoral college and how does it work? Well, the electoral college is what we use to elect the president. Now, every single state gets electoral votes. An electoral vote is basically an elector that's going to vote, cast their ballot. Okay? So the elector is the person appointed by the state legislature to vote for the president. And the number of electors is based on the number of senators, which we know there are two per state, and the number of representatives, which is based on population, that it elects to Congress. So for example, if I look to the state of California, it gets 53 representatives plus two senators. That means that it gets 55 electoral votes. So here's California, right? 55 electoral votes. Now, what about if I was a state, for example, like, um, oh, I don't know, Wyoming, all right? So Wyoming has a much smaller population, so it gets its two senators, and then it gets one additional representative based on population, so it total gets three electoral votes. To win the presidency, a candidate has to win 268 electoral votes. That's one more than half. That's the majority. There have been five times in our nation's history when the candidates with the most popular votes lost the election to the number of electoral votes. Okay, and that has happened in 1824, 1876, 1888, 2000, and 2016. So again, that's when the person with the most popular votes lost because of the Electoral College. Okay? Now, the, the idea behind the Electoral College is it protects those smaller states, right, like Wyoming, and ensures that they get a say and who is elected as president. It also puts a cap on states like California or Texas or New York or Florida that have very large populations and it makes sure that all states get a say, not necessarily an equal say, but a say nonetheless. 
So for today's lesson, you have three questions that you need to answer. You're going to use the document to help you from whitehouse.gov. Your three questions are, what is the president's responsibility as commander and chief? What are two executive departments that are included within the president's cabinet? And what is the purpose of the president's cabinet? Now, don't forget for each of these questions, you need to TTQA your response. I hope you have a great Friday, and I will see all of you at today's live session. Bye now.